things happen to people in this country. Since 2008, seen terrible bushfires in Victoria. We've had three once in a century floods in Queensland. Many of you in your regions have seen terrible floods come through, other forms of natural disaster. So it's a country that's beautiful, but also can be very, very harsh on people. It's also a country where you know, people are underinsured and we do have injuries in the workplace and we do have injuries on our roads and it can stop people from living the life that they otherwise thought they would have. So this is a really important conversation around growing and protecting the wealth of all Australians. In New South Wales, we're a bit below the national average at about 21%, although we are number one in New South Wales as well. So we are doing better than everyone else, but if you turn it around to our purpose as leaders, our purpose as individuals in our family, our purpose to our staff, our purpose to our customers, I really worry that we actually aren't having the conversations to make us feel that we've done the right thing by our customers in all circumstances. If I throw out a silly example to you and say, Stuart, you've just been fortunate, you've bought a car, it's a lovely car, it costs $40,000, are you driving it out of the showroom without any insurance? It's only $40,000. No. Anyone wants to drive that car out of the showroom without insurance? And yet, on arguably someone's most important and largest purchase around their home, we've got people effectively driving that home out of the showroom without insurance either for themselves, their income, or their asset. And it's this where I want to kind of share, um, introduce John, who's going to share his story um, about uh, this. Now, John is really well qualified on so many fronts to talk to you today and share his story. John was a former life insurance agent from Ballarat in Victoria and had a really thriving career, a thriving business in this area and was looking forward to a promotion. He's happily married at the time to his wife Angie and brought up four teenage daughters and then he was critically injured in a serious motor accident and suffered severe long-term injuries. Now this was at 42 years of age, so John and Ange have four children, they were still in secondary school, paying off the dream home, cars on a lease, many other financial commitments. John was told that he would never work again, losing his ability to earn an income. Now fortunately for John, he had some income protection, which saved his family in a financial sense. Now John spends his time talking at various forums and we're really privileged to have John talking to all of you today. He promotes not only road safety, but also speaks about the importance of insurance, of income protection, and importantly, having the right level of cover. John's been nominated for Australian of the Year in 2013 and 14. He's appeared in many forums across the Westpac group and on public television. Can you please join me in giving a big Westpac welcome to John Ma. Thanks, Jason. Good on you. Thank you. I'm going to take you on a journey back in time. And we're going back to Saturday, the 3rd of April, 1993. The place is Axdale. It's a lovely little town just outside of Bendigo. Back then, I was the agency manager of an insurance company. I was aged 42 years old. And look at you all, looking at me and you're looking up there and I know what you're thinking. <laughs> he still looks like he's 42. I started out with a company called TNG. If, in, if there's anyone really old in this room, you would remember TNG. It was called Temperance and General Insurance Company. When I was aged 28, I moved to Bendigo as the agency manager. By the time I got to age 42, I had 32 agents and four staff working for me. We were incredibly successful. The second most successful life office for that company in Victoria. What I'm now going to do is fast forward in my life and my family's life just one day. We're going forward now to Sunday the 4th of April 1993. The place is still Axdale, just outside of Bendigo. The time is 12 noon. My destination was to be a cricket function. I was the captain coach of the Sedgwick Cricket Club and we were going out to celebrate the fact that we just won two premierships that year. Ange went to church at Axdale and I said, I'm not coming to church today, Ange. I'm going to go out and make sure everything's set up and ready to go at the barbecue. I'll see you when you get out there. I wasn't to get there. My destiny, in fact, was to be a car crash. And it was my car crash. I'd borrowed Michelle's car, the bottom one. 
and I was on my way out to the cricket function and as I was going into Axdale, I was in the 80 kilometre zone. I was slowing towards 60. I saw a four wheel drive coming towards me out of the 60 kilometre zone. I noticed it lose control, it veered really quickly across the road in front of me. It then swerved back again. I came to a complete stop on the highway. It rolled up the road towards me, and as you can see, it's bounced up in the air. I lost complete sight of it, it went that high, and it landed upside down on the roof and bonnet of my car. I was knocked unconscious, and the first thing that I remember when I came to for the first time was someone outside the car saying, whoever is in there has got to be dead. And the reason he was saying that was because the roof of my car was on the door sills all the way around the car. What saved my life was both front seats broke and laid me back into the back seat with the roof hard down on top of me and the four wheel drive on top of that. An ambulance officer was able to get in the back door of the car eventually and he woke me up making a mess of trying to put a drip in my arm. When, he, when I came to he said to me, how old are you? Do you know what day it is? Do you know what time it is? And do you know what's happened? I answered all of those questions and he said, mate, I can't believe it, but I think you might be okay. I passed out again. The next time I woke up, I'd had two operations and I woke up in intensive care in St John of God's Hospital in Bendigo. Ange and my four girls were all sitting around the bed and I had tubes and plaster and all sorts of things. So how was my life affected? I have frontal lobe damage. I have 26 plates and screws in my face. That's why I look like I'm still 42. I have serious neck and back problems. The, the short-term memory problems are my biggest issue. I didn't realise at the time that I even had short-term memory problems from the frontal lobe damage. I didn't even know I had a frontal lobe damage. Four months after the car crash, John Carmichael, our state manager, telephoned me at home. He said, John, there's been, it was like that, the bells were ringing. He said, John, there's been some changes made in the company and under the new structure, there's no position for John Ma." I said, I beg your pardon, mate, what are you talking about? He said, there's been some changes made in the company and under the new structure, there's no position for John Ma." And he hung the phone up in my ear. Ange was sitting at the kitchen table and she said, what was that all about? I said, Ange, I've just got the sack. So what do you think of a car crash now? I'm walking up and down in a hydro pool. I had to do that for five months to try and get my body going again. I'm in counselling. I've got four girls that I'm trying to educate at Catholic College in Bendigo. We're paying off our home loan and I've now got the sack. A car crash is not just a car crash, especially if someone lives through it. So I was told that I was unemployable at age 42 years old. 42. It was the specialist in Melbourne that told me that first and I said rubbish. And then the specialist in Bendigo told me the same thing and finally my insurance company told me that. And the reason that they had terminated my employment was because they had my medical information. And they knew that the frontal lobe damage was the re real issue. This is a financial disaster. My employment was terminated four months after my car crash. And that means that your income stops immediately. At the time, I lost an income of in excess of $150,000 a year. I was really good at my job. I had a great office full of people who were wonderful at their jobs. We were going places. Michelle, by this time now, thankfully was an apprentice hairdresser. Katrina was at university in Melbourne and Jasmine and Carmen were at secondary college at Catholic College in Bendigo where we were paying their private education secondary fees. I had a substantial home loan. I'd gone to National Mutual, who I was working for at the time, and I said to them, I'm looking to purchase this property. It was a 42 square home on 42 acres just outside of Bendigo. They said, absolutely, John. We're really happy to loan you that money. I had two leased cars. I'd leased one for my assistant manager as well. As luck would have it, two months before the car crash, I purchased an investment property in Melbourne, a warehouse, as an investment. That was pretty good timing. Thank heavens for income protection. I tell everyone who works in the insurance or the advice industry that they should all put on the top of their computer, thank heavens for income protection. Because I'm telling you, it saved us as a family. The policy that I took out back when I was 36 years old was the best income protection policy you could get then. 
I've seen what you can offer people now and it is light years ahead of what was available back then. I took a policy out that had a one month waiting period. It was CPI linked. It would increase by the cost of living every year. Income protection saved us financially. And when I had all of those other medical issues and those troubles and those worries with, with health and not having a job, the last thing that I needed was the financial burden hanging over my head as well. I don't want any of you for one split second to think that this type of thing can't happen to you personally. I don't want you to think for one split second that it can't happen to some of your clients or at least one of your clients. The difficulty you have is to know which one it's going to happen to. And the reason that I talk to you about this is because this is life being life. And life will happen to you whether you like it or not. And it will happen in all forms. Unfortunately for our family, this is what happened to us. We have to trust that it won't, but they can happen. Our family is not unique. In fact, there are families that are a lot worse off than us. I'll go back now to the income protection policy. The premium I paid in 1987 was $1,020. The total premiums I paid over the six years was $7,800. I was paid over the next 16 years $1.1 million. Does anyone here believe that insurance works? Absolutely, it works. It absolutely works. It saved us. But I'm going to tell you some home truths. The initial cover was for $50,000. I was earning, when I took it out at age 36, I was earning $75,000 a year. If you can remember back to when I had the claim, I was earning $150,000 when I had my car crash. Who's the idiot in the room who didn't review his own insurances? What have I cost my family? The cost was enormous. Why didn't I review my insurances? I was busy. I was like you guys, I was busy. I was playing super fool's footy. I was the president of the trotting club. I was, had 32 people working for me. I was a captain coach of a cricket club. I was doing stuff. I was too busy to look to my family's protection. And it cost us dearly. You should review your client's situation annually. And you people have a great opportunity by getting close to the greatest asset that all of you have, and that is your BT advisor. What an asset. They know what they're doing. You don't have to do everything. You just have to put them with your clients. Some more home truths. The disposable income, because there was no tax deductions. What did it cost me to get that money paid into my bank account every fortnight? Nothing. There was no personal exertion. So I was on the top tax bracket, and it turned in, after I paid tax, it turned into $32,000 a year. Can you live on that? I couldn't. So if I couldn't survive on that, how would I survive on government benefits? Impossible. The investment property. It was sold at a fire sale five months after my car crash. Luckily and fortunately, I was smart enough to recognise that that was going to be an issue. I couldn't keep up those payments. Our beautiful home that we had at Long Lee, and it doesn't look beautiful there because it was gone three years after I had my car crash because I couldn't afford to keep paying those repayments. And the reason that's a horrible photograph is because when we did that, it hurt me and us so much personally to lose such a beautiful property. I burnt every single photograph that I'd taken. So what of our future? I'm now 63 years old. I was insured right through to age 65. And I can tell you, I was able to ring my insurance company in 2007 say, to say I no, now no longer need the insurance. And they stopped paying me, which was great. When I looked in the mirror, I didn't actually see a person that I truly believed could never work again. I believed in myself. So now, I talk to the insurance industry, the banking industry, the finance industry on income protection. Because when I first went into insurance, and even while I was in insurance for all those years as a manager, I thought that the most important insurance policies that you had was your life insurance, your term insurance, your superannuation. And I was 100% 
incorrect. The most important insurance protection every person should have is to protect your income. That is the most important. And if you don't believe me, go back to your office and get a blank piece of paper and write your annual income on that blank piece of paper. And then reach into your drawer and pull out a black texture and put a big black line through it. See how long you will last. See how long your bank account will keep you afloat. See how long your investment portfolio will last and sit back and watch the house of cards fall down around your ears. Income protection is the most important insurance that anyone should have from age 18. If you start earning an income at 18, they should take it out straight away. They're fit and healthy and young and got low premiums. Right through. And if you don't believe your clients need it, I'm telling you, every single one of you in your client base, in that hard drive, your clients are in there unprotected, a lot of them. And they should be screaming out to you, help me, help me, help me, because you're the people who can help them. It's a daunting task because I know you have an enormous amount of clients, but put in place a process where you systematically connect and uh, review all of your client's situation. I know you're setting up the portfolio for their retirement and their holidays and all of these type of things. Let's protect it. It's so easily done with about two to 3% of their income off the top of their income. That's all it will take. Your BT advisor is your greatest asset in this area. This is what the insurances is all about. It allows families to grow together with protection, with security, with that umbrella over the top of us that will look after us. And you people need to become not good at your job. I want you to become great. You need to become great. The first review that you should do in the area of income protection, when you get back to your office, sit down and review your own. Review your own situation. Review it for yourself, for your husband or your wife, and your kids and your family. And then once you see that situation, go straight to your client base because they need your help desperately and quickly. And I wish you greatness as you speak to your clients. Thank you. <laughs>